Pentagon close behind. Wow, Pentagon is not at all timid. He doesn't discriminate here. Yeah, on the other side of the ring, though, Mundo and Phoenix having a knockdown dragout brawl. And right next to me, my partner Vampiro has locked eyes with Pentagon. Those kicks to the hamstring. Lower back, hamstring. Ow! But chest. Hey, you know what he just said, Spanish or English, that means it is what it is, kid. Wow. Sir Johnny called for the fight. Well, if we're going to name a number one contender, the way we should do it here in the temple is with a fight. And Pentagon and Johnny Mundo have been so close to the top of Lucha Underground. Bam! Exactly, but I don't think Phoenix is, is anything but stupid. Look at him taking his time, catching his breath. Maybe he's going to let these two beat each other to death. He'll sneak in and maybe he'll steal that win. Good point. It is elimination, but I think the story is the fight here between Pentagon and Johnny Mundo. He said, I think I can take you. Oh, Taya grabbed the foot. Wow. Held up Pentagon, and now to your point, Phoenix opportunistically comes in. Kick doubles over oh. Johnny. Kick stands Johnny. Oh, oh nice damn. Nice kick to Mundo. Back on his back. That was a flurry of kicks. Combination spinning back kicks up, down, and all around. Taya nicely done there. Top rope Rana clears the ring. And now Taya using the ropes for momentum. Went for the tilt of world. Taya shoots her oh. DDT. It was enough to take Pentagon down. What would a Taya Matanza Cueto match look like? I don't want to get too perverted, dude, but I think it would be very violent. The Northern Lights, we've seen it before. Taya floats over, followed by the double stomp. Taya has one elimination this way already. No. She's on fire, man. She, even in Spanish, cuenta, count. You know, and if we break down the matchups in your mind, just handicap each luchador versus Matanza Cueto. In your mind, who can possibly unseat our champion? Brother. I would give it to any one of these four because you never know what happens at that level. One little mistake can cost you a victory. And all you, know you need that. to do is get into the championship game. That's all you need to do, and then anything can happen. One of these four luchadors has their destiny before them tonight. Like, what if? Let's let's give a what if. What if Matanza gets blinded by her beauty, doesn't pay attention, and she hooks him? I'm just saying. I think they made a movie about that called Beauty and the Beast. Cover here! Oh, I think it was called King Kong. What's wrong with you? Oh. <laughs> Johnny just seems to get so pissed anytime anyone attacks Taya. Uh, yeah. And Bam, to your point, what if it comes down to Johnny and Taya? We've known Johnny to be all about one thing, the Lucha Underground title and himself. Well, it's been eluding him since the day he was born, man, so I don't see how he's going to change things now. We all know Johnny. I called it from day one. Oh, wow. Man, she's in the fight. She's not only recovered, she's also dishing it. And uh, if you are handicapping at home, Matanza does own victories over two of these fighters here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh man. Oh, I've seen this before. Phoenix, and now package pile driver on Taya. The fair-haired one has been planted. Two, she's gone. Gentlemen, what started out as six to survive is now a three-way match. When we come back, one of these three luchadors, Phoenix, Pentagon, or Johnny Mundo, will be on their way to Ultima Lucha Dope. Get the best of DTA channels and internet content on your TV. Presenting Airtel Internet TV.
Welcome back to Lucha Underground. This started with six luchadors and luchadoras in the ring. It's an elimination match. We're down to three. The winner faces the monster Matanza Cueto for the Lucha Underground title at Ultima Lucha Dos. Vampiro putting you on the spot, my man. Who do you like? Well, you take Johnny Mundo from Hollywood, or you take Phoenix, who through history has risen from the flames. He's faced every hardship there is, every battle, scar tissue all over his soul, and he continues to come back. Pentagon, who has walked the dark line, has gone to the depths of hell. Here he is. I'm thinking to myself, Johnny Mundo better start saying his prayers, pal. Well, if you think about the history, you'll remember Matanza Cueto and Pentagon. It was Bane to Batman when Matanza broke Pentagon's back. If you're Johnny or Phoenix, do you go after the back vamp? I would think you should, but at this stage in the game, you can see right here, exchanging chops just so they can get a pop from the crowd. I think Ego has taken over. His strategy is way out the window. Now, only Phoenix and Pentagon have experience with the monster Matanza Cueto. How would Johnny Mundo fare in a potential matchup? I think the smartest thing to do is, like you said, Matt, if it was Phoenix or Johnny Mundo, they study, and they know that the Pentagon is here with that injury in his back. Johnny, as much as I don't like him, he's probably one of the smarter guys on the roster. He's been to the big leagues. He's been to the big dance. He knows what Cover to do. here! No! Back to the action in the ring, because that's what it's all about. Pentagon finding some reprieve here as Johnny and Phoenix fight. There's the experience of Johnny Mundo right now. He's got, he's got his eyes on Pentagon outside, making sure he's still got time to pull off this victory in the ring right now against Phoenix. It's not going to be easy. Both of them are warriors. They've been there, been back, and they'll go again. This is a tough one to call, Matt. Phoenix has the high-flying advantage. Johnny can do some high-flying himself, but Johnny is a great mat wrestler. We've seen a grounded power style. Nicely done there. The power bomb, though. Whereas Pentagon is well-versed in submission grappling. So you have a bevy of styles here, an amalgamation. Only one can reign supreme. Whoever comes out on top, it doesn't matter. In my point of view, mad love, mad props to all everybody who's been in this match. This has been a battle. Fans are definitely behind Phoenix, calling the battle cry of Animal. Phoenix sent in, holds on to the ropes, has some words for Johnny. Phoenix using his speed to evade Johnny, knew that it would beat wow. the impetuous Mundo. That is beyond world class. Only here in Lucha Underground, you can see something like that. And now a Pentagon Jr., the breaker of bones, shows that he too can fly. Pentagon, after a broken back, revenge is a dish best served cold. You can only believe that it's starting to become chilly here in the temple for Pentagon. This is part of the magic of Lucha Underground in the temple when the fans call it. This is beyond awesome, Matt. You see a great overhead shot, and now we're just over the shoulder of Pentagon as he chops Phoenix. These two now trade strikes. And, and to the casual viewer, these fighters choose open hand strikes as they don't want to break their hands throwing punches. Well, from a guy who teaches people Krav Maga, I can tell you right now, a palm strike will do more damage any time. A fist, you might even break your hand if you hit him wrong. Palm strike causes more damage, Matt. Wow, speaking of damage, unique offense inflicting damage there from Phoenix on Pentagon. It almost feels like a heavyweight fight at the 15th round at the end, right? They're just slugging it out. That's something that doesn't exist anymore. They used to be called the championship rounds, rounds 12, 13, 14, and 15. But to Vamp's point, yes, this is where the men are separated from the boys here. The top fighters in the world convene here on the temple. All to be called Lucha Underground Champion. Wow, Johnny got so high. He almost busted the camera off the gym.
crazy. No regard for personal safety. Now Johnny calling in one of his comps, a free seat for a friend or family, or perhaps an opponent wow. there. Exacto Mundo right into Pentagon's face. I'm almost surprised that if Johnny's in this position where he's got them both rocking, he's not going to try to take advantage of the one who's suffered the most damage. You know what I'm saying? It's a good point. But I think Johnny knows that, that Phoenix is a former Lucha Underground champion. We talked about Johnny's ego. Pinning Phoenix would do wonders for Johnny's ego. Is Johnny three seconds away from that? No. Johnny does have an ego, but I've said it. And at this stage in the game, in the big, big matches, when it's coming down to the end, Johnny kind of puts that ego in check, and he pulls out all stops, and he, he wears these people down, not only physically, but psychologically. This is where Johnny Mundo should be ahead of the game. Man, you and I have talked about it. A lot of the fighters today like to wear the uh, physical therapy tape, but it really just tells your opponent where you have an injury, and Johnny seemed to be focusing his attack on Phoenix's right shoulder. Exactly. I, I, maybe I'm old school. I would never tell anybody I have an injury. Kick Putting the, the bullseye on your back. Doubles over. Johnny, beautifully done. Standing C4. Is it enough? No! How about Phoenix? How about Johnny Mundo as the battle wears on? He seems to get stronger. Most people will get tired, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But Johnny's just got that fire. Cover here. Ooh, 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 referee Marty Elias. If we had instant replay, man, we would look at that one again. Even Johnny's pissed off. He thinks that might have been oh. a slow count. How much more does he got it to? He's so close. Wow. As Johnny Mundo stands over Phoenix and Pentagon. Come on, Johnny, go for it. And now the ultimate Rudo. Trying to get to Ultima Lucha Dos. Mundo sends Pentagon in. Sets up Pentagon. Looks like Phoenix in as well. Pentagon Bandaras Phoenix onto the apron to protect himself. Phoenix turns Johnny. Uh, Pentagon turns Johnny around. Wow. What does Phoenix have here? Ugh. Oh! High elevation double stomp. And now, Johnny in position, but Phoenix and Pentagon start their fight. Body scissor up. Whoa. Oh, it looked like... Hang on, what's going on? Johnny Mundo has been eliminated. Phoenix was trying to give an assist to Pentagon. Pentagon trying to roll up Phoenix, and Johnny is the one that suffered the consequence. Mundo's been eliminated. How crazy was that what we just saw? I, I, I was never in a million years expecting that to happen. As much as I wish Johnny pulled it off at the end, and he looked like he was going to do it, Matt. I, I don't know if him taking that little break, worrying about telling the people where to go, that might have been the cause of his downfall. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Mundo has been eliminated. What started out with six now leaves us with only two. And how appropriate because these two men, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, have sowed the seeds here in Lucha Underground since the beginning. And when we come back, a garden of violence is about to bloom. Don't you dare go away. If this device can surf, download, play games and videos, then you'd say, what's new? But what if this can do all that and more? Well, here's the Wi-Fi enabled Airtel Internet TV.
Century Luchador. Here we go. Phoenix in off the ropes now. Pentagon pops him up. Phoenix lands hard. And now Pentagon may be looking for the submission. Wow. Oh, look at that. The house of pain. Will we get the concession here? The pressure on the ankles, knees, and neck of Phoenix. kind of stuff he's more into the violence and he said you want lucha libre you want to see wrestling he put that hold on so tight and now phoenix wow. with a submission of his own almost like both guys are giving a war cry to the gods both are screaming you want to see lucha libre this is lucha libre wow you'll notice the placement of phoenix foot it puts pressure on pentagon's arm that maneuver put pressure on Pentagon's lower back. As this match fights on, we watch. Hang on here. Pentagon. Whoa. Oh. Look at the pressure on his back. Damn. Both of these men going for submission early on. Phoenix catches a cutter, rolls through. Dragon Sleeper. This is a very painful submission on the back of the neck as well as the spine. Remember Pentagon's previous injuries. Phoenix needs to stand all the way up. He does not have maximum torque on this hold, Vamp. I don't think he can. I think his bones are so tight, his muscles in his back are so tight, that no matter what he does, he can't crank it anymore. It's cranked so tight. So the previous submissions we saw are now compromising the integrity of the submissions that a fighters choose to use. Now, Pentagon controlling the right arm. Phoenix blocks. Knuckle lock. Phoenix now using his environment as only he can. Lucha Libre on display here in Lucha Underground. Pentagon to the floor. Deep, deep, deep traditions. Phoenix now. The bird of war. About to fly! Matt, he's, I swear to God, he's spun around four times. Good Lord. I can actually feel the building shake. Senior official Marty Elias checks on both fighters. And Hell yes, yeah. this is awesome. This is six to survive. This is Lucha Underground. You almost got to wonder what is going to happen when the lights go out and these guys are in the rooms, they're at home, or wherever it is they go. What is going to go through their mind when the pain starts to set in tonight? For one of them, it will be their match with the monster Matanza Cueto. For the other, it's where does my career go next? cover here and vamp if you want to continue to draw parallels here both of these two luchadors for my opinion their careers truly ascended at last year's ultima lucha i'm just in love with lucha underground and the temple the fans know what's up they know what time it is and now a haggard phoenix sends pentagon across the length of the ring pentagon steps out of the turnbuckle creates space now has Phoenix in a compromising position. Brother, he kicked him 
so hard. Yep. He flipped him off the top rope. That's a big man throwing a big kick. And it depends where you place it. You know very well if it's a liver shot, internal bleeding, that could be it. Pentagon popped up. Oh! Oh! Nice flipping reverse pile driver. Is it enough? Two. No. Pentagon did not that look to the leg. I knew you were thinking. You read my mind, brother. He did not. He was there. He was at the finish line. This is Max's taking its toll. Yes, as the believers beat the drums of war, Pentagon starts to stir. Phoenix keeping his shoulders off the mat. This war has been going on for how long tonight? Almost an hour. There you go, and listen to the fans. People at home, pay attention. This is Lucha. Some of our bravest men and women in attendance here in the front row. And they know all about it. They know about not quitting, not giving up, taking one more punch, standing up and facing your fear. It's exactly what's going on in the ring. And now Pentagon, the man with zero fear, trying to get some offense here on Phoenix. Pentagon looking to make up the space, but Phoenix makes it up with a palm strike instead. Look at Phoenix. A realization from the bird of war. Phoenix puts himself into position. What does he have in store here? Whoa! Oh, shit! Damn! Phoenix now rolling over. Hook the leg. Arm around two. Oh! The little things, the fundamentals like the leg hooks and the ring positioning is what it all boils down to. That is and the size of your heart, your character, what's instilled in you, your will not only to win, but to continue, not to back down, never, never, never give up. Wow. The believers are conflicted for these two fighters that arrived on the same night in Lucha Underground. How fitting, how poetic that these two now stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ultima Lucha Dos around the corner. Oh! Nice sling blade clothesline there. Pentagon keeps his momentum going now. Another sling blade clothesline, but Phoenix gets right back up. Damn it. Uh -oh. Went for the third time. Phoenix with the kick. And the only thing between these two, the ancient Aztec seal. Look at how he's grabbing his stomach. Phoenix knows where that kid goes. I said it earlier. Could it be the famous, infamous liver shot? Knocked out Pentagon. One fighter on his back, the other on his chest. Both writhing, stirring, trying to find something. The last ounce of fight. Who has it? The cries of war. You know very well how I'm a fan of this. This adrenaline will wake these two up and push them across the line one more time. Phoenix the first to his feet. Chooses to go for some high-risk offense. Missed the double stop. Oh, God. Pentagon just dislocated Phoenix's jaw. Unhinged, if you will. Wow. Matt, this is something that just is beyond brutally aggressive. This is amazing. This is Lucha Underground, folks. I'm sorry. And you know that the locker room, oh, man, are all watching with bated breath as they see two of their brothers, two of their own, leave it all on the line here in the temple. They look like they're dead. Mexican destroyer flipping pile driver on the floor. The referee will dare not start a count. Dario Cueto loves violence and loves a clear-cut winner. I think there would be a riot. I think the, fan, the fans would go insane and destroy this building if they call it like that. And hey, man, there has to be a winner, brother. All the believers on their feet in anticipation of what these two could possibly do next to one another. Phoenix, Phoenix is totally, totally out. Look at the fans. Pentagon, 
the first one to show signs of life. Well, we all know very well where the Phoenix comes up, rises from the depths, takes a beating like no other. Could he one more time work a miracle? And now Pentagon, who has become a student of the dark arts. What type of sick, twisted thoughts run through that man's head? Only he would know, man. Might have been going for the three-up, three-down driver on the package pile driver, but Phoenix was able to switch it up now. Oh, right down on the neck. Strategy, smart, desperation, running on fumes. I don't know. The question is, can Phoenix cover Pentagon? Phoenix starts to stir, rolls over, realizes where he is. No! And if you've watched wrestling your entire life or tonight's your first time, you have to start to question. They're human. What do they need to do to one another? What is left inside the hearts of these men? Dude, I don't think either one of these two guys are human. Maybe they were once. That's long gone, dude. Well, they have the human desire to go to Ultima Lucha Dos. To be champion. To be king of the temple to be considered the best. Wow. Good Lord. Oh, Jesus. Bro, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned, man. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know what to say. just begs the question oh! what will be left for the monster Matanza Cueto Pentagon held on package driver Pentagon floats over Enjoy the moment. I'm thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, there we see Pentagon's opponent at Ultima Lucha Dos, the champion, the monster Matanza Cueto, and his brother, our boss, Dario Cueto. decir algo cabrón en última lucha le voy a romper todos y cada uno de los huesos que hay en el cuerpo de tu hermanito y para que veas que soy bien chingón también te voy a romper los huesos a ti ¿Sabes por qué? Quiero que escuches Porque yo soy Pentagon Junior Ladies and gentlemen, it seems that the student has advanced and now he must continue his journey to higher learning. The question is, will he graduate or fail? Because Pentagon's next class is with the Professor of Pain, the Sensei of Sadism, and Pentagon better get ready for a crash course in violence. At Ultima Lucha Dos, Pentagon collides with the Lucha Underground champion, the monster Matanza Cueto. <laughs>
Get the best of DTA channels and internet content on your TV. Presenting Airtel Internet TV. This week, we're celebrating a new driver in Victory Lane while bringing a seasoned veteran out of retirement. Oh, and we got a new sign. This is the Face Lab. With Watkins Glen behind us, it's more of the same this week for the NASCAR Xfinity Series as they prepare to navigate the twists and turns of mid-Ohio. But it's full throttle for the Cup and Truck Series as they head to the Irish Hills of Michigan. Welcome to the Pace Lap. I'm Jesse Punch. With just four races now till the start of the playoffs, it was kind of refreshing to see a new face in Victory Lane this past weekend. That's right, Chase Elliott took the checkered flag in Sunday's Cup Series race. And not only did he solidify his spot in this year's playoffs, he did so with his first ever Cup Series win. And he had a little bit of help from his dad, NASCAR Hall of Famer Bill Elliott, who also made NASCAR news this past week, but we'll get to that a little bit later. First, let's see what some of NASCAR's other series were up to this past weekend. The weekend action in Watkins Glen kicked off on Friday with the k Pro Series East. Brett Moffitt, in his first k race this season, stole the lead from Will Rogers on the final lap to take the checkered flag at the Glen. More racing on Saturday. In Stafford Springs, it was the Wheelan Modified Tour. Doug Kobe earned his first mods win this season. Also on Saturday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series took on Watkins Glen. At the green flag, it's Joey Logano on the pole looking for his second Xfinity win this season. The first came earlier this season at Fontana. Logano held the lead through the entire first stage to earn the stage one point. Lap 28, Matt Tift in the two blew a right rear tire coming around turn four, taking out the 24 of Justin Haley, who was behind him. Both cars out for the day. AJ Allmendinger took the lead under the caution and fought Justin Allgaier to the stage two finish, edging him out for the green and white checkered flag. But after a late race caution, Joey Logano regains the lead with 10 to go, beating the field to the checkered flag for his second Xfinity win this season. At the start of the cup race, Denny Hamlin is on the pole. Obviously, the big three of Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Martin Truex Jr. have been the talk this season. They've dominated the majority of the season's races, and here we are just one lap in. Busch taking over this race, stealing the lead from Denny Hamlin. But the caution came out early on lap five. Eric Amarola gets loose in turn seven. The back of his car slamming into the sidewall there near the start-finish line. 
Lap 17, Kyle Busch strategically heads to the pits before the end of the stage, handing over the lead to Martin Truex Jr., who goes on to take stage one. Early on in stage two, Chase Elliott gets to the inside of Kyle Busch, taking the lead, and he is your stage two winner. Trouble for Matt DiBenedetto on lap 55, but that caution did work out in favor of the nine team. Chase Elliott takes back the lead under caution, leading on the restart, and he held it through the final 34 laps for his first career Cup Series win. What an exciting day for Elliott and the nine team. Pretty special seeing Chase Elliott celebrate his first Cup win with his dad, 1988 NASCAR champion Bill Elliott, or Million Dollar Bill, as you may have heard him called. And there have been a few interesting similarities between the two drivers' careers. Both had eight second place finishes before their first win, and both earned that first win on a road course. Pretty cool, right? Well, given all of the similarities, it only makes sense that earlier last weekend, before the cup race, I'll add, it was announced that Bill Elliott would come out of retirement to drive for GMS Racing at Road America in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Awesome Bill from Dawsonville is 62 years old and hasn't been behind the wheel in one of NASCAR's top series since 2012. He did say he has a few butterflies, but he wants to embrace it and have a good time. Shifting gears to the weekend, the Xfinity Series is in Ohio, so we had Daniel Hemrick take a few laps in our NASCAR Heat 2 simulator to break down mid-Ohio for us. Coming to start a lap, it's really key to be out this last corner here in a big straight motion and really get the throttle down. It's a really slick wheel out racetrack. Got to make a quick downshift right here by the bridge. Kind of a brush of the brake. Kind of just try to clip this edge of this curving. Use all the racetrack up right here on the exit. Not quite that much. <laughs> you get yourself pointed down this back straightaway here. It's a really, really crucial braking zone. Big passing zone too. So really kind of a blind corner entry. Start looking for this curbing here on the right. Try to hug this as tight as you can. You've got to get the power down. To lead this long straightaway here. All the way up through the gears. Wide open. A lot of drafting to set you up for the next passing zone. Probably the next best passing zone is right here. Hard braking. Try to clip the edges, curving here. And then I personally use a lot of curving right here on the left side. Really blind corner, down to the left. Want to get back left so you can get right. Get a good exit off this curving here. It's a wide open. You want to get as much throttle down right here, straight line as you can. Pretty good brush of the brake. Looking out to the right, the curving. A lot of elevation right here. Get a lot of wheel spin. Just trying to get all the power down you can with a four-out racetrack. Try to get as far right. It's a crucial spot right here for lap time. You can make or lose a lot of lap time right here. It leads you to the last corner, which we've seen a lot of bumping runs in the past. All you can do is get the power down again. Back through the gears, a complete lap. And in preparation for the weekend at Michigan, Cup driver Eric Jones took a few laps in our NASCAR Heat 2 simulator to give us his strategy for this two-mile track. So Michigan's one of the fastest tracks we get to go to all year, so a lot of it is really carrying a ton of entry speed down in as far as you can. You kind of run the middle groove here and keep your momentum up, and you got to run your car uh, pretty free overall, but. Turn two exit is pretty tight. It comes up on you really quick. Uh, you can't let that come out and bite you. You've seen a lot of guys get into, into trouble off of turn two. Turn three, the entry is really, really flat. You get really loose in here a lot of times. Um, but you get down to the middle and you can really pick up the throttle early. The exit's really, really wide down here. And you've got a lot of room to let your car run up all the way to the wall uh, and carry a ton of speed down the front straight away. So Michigan's really all about keeping your momentum going and making sure you're making those straightaways as long as you can. Let's take a look ahead at this weekend's schedule. A lot of racing on Saturday, starting with the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, kicking things off in Michigan. This is a big race for Johnny Sauter. He could possibly clinch the regular season title this weekend, so big stakes for Sauter at Michigan. 
Also on Saturday, it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Mid-Ohio. And the K&N Pro Series West is in action in Washington to wrap up the racing on Saturday. And on Sunday, the Pinty Series is running in Quebec at Trois Rivières, the oldest street course in North America. That's pretty neat. And in Michigan, it's the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series wrapping up the weekend. That's all for this week's episode of The Pace Lap. If you have a driver that you'd like to see on the show or maybe a topic that you'd like us to cover, feel free to email us at tpl at nascar.com. I'm Jesse Punch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the track. Welcome to another episode of NASCAR U. I'm Jesse Punch, and today I'm here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte, North Carolina. This place is full of some of the most legendary items that have ever come out of our sport. So let's head inside, learn a little bit more about the history of NASCAR. This is Kevin. He's the director of exhibits here at the Hall of Fame, and he's going to be teaching us a little bit more about the history of our sport today. Kevin, what do you have for us? We have a great scavenger hunt. I figured what better way of learning about NASCAR than a little bit of fun and games. So I'm going to have you go through the facility and look for some things, but I'm not going to tell you what to look for. I'm just going to give you some clues and let you find them on your own. All right, so you're going to make this, this difficult on me then, right? Uh, let's call it fun. All right, we'll call it fun for now. <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to have you looking for. So the first thing I'm going to have you look for is a musical instrument. Then we're going to walk around and look for NASCAR's original trophy. After that, a piece of twisted metal, a military ward, and for our final item, I'll have you cross the finish line. A little bit vague, but I don't think this should be too difficult. Well, it may be a little bit challenging, but I'm sure you'll do great. And just like the start of every NASCAR race, we are ready to wave the green flag. four levels to this place. Well, considering I have zero sense of direction, this is gonna be a good time. All right, I don't see an instrument, but I could do some laundry, so I'll keep that in mind. Okay, this might sound a little funny, but I'm uh, looking for a musical instrument. Do you know where I might find it? Okay, thanks. Well, it would only make sense that the first clue takes us back to the early days of NASCAR, but I will say I'm still not quite sure what this ukulele has to do with anything. That's right, it's not a steering wheel, it's not a race car, it's not a trophy, so why have a ukulele in the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Well, the importance of this instrument, it was owned by Bill France Sr. And Bill France is the man who had the vision for creating NASCAR. He got a group of folks together in late 1947 and they said, how do we make stock car racing great? And they hammered out what NASCAR is and what it would become and nobody knew in that era if it was going to be as big as it certainly is today but he had that vision and he really saw that stock car racing could be great now the other fun thing about this is a ukulele is a traditionally a small instrument and bill france had a nickname and it was big bill france and we have a statue of bill france here at the nashville <laughs> hall of fame and you can see he earned that nickname big bill he was a tall tall gentleman yeah, I'd say. Uh, I don't know that we'd be uh, very good dance partners here. That's right. You might not be good dance partners, but he certainly had the vision and really the strength to create the sport that we all love today. Well, and anybody that spends their free time strumming on a ukulele is a friend of mine, right? That's right. Must have been fun at parties. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Well, now that we've covered the founder, let's keep on finding some more clues, right? Absolutely. I need some help. Let's see. Well, Winston was the original sponsor of the Cup Series, right? So this has to be it. 
Well, that's right. Winston was involved in the sport from the early 1970s through the early 2000s, and certainly a lot of people associate this iconic trophy with one of the earliest championship trophies in the sport. But you have to remember, Winston only came on in the early 1970s, and the sport got its start in the late 1940s, so there's actually a championship trophy in this facility that's even older than our Winston Cups. Interesting. So before 1984, so the first official season of the official series of NASCAR in 1949. Yep. Ah. Okay, let's see. 1949 season. Who was the champion? Oh, Red Byron, of course. I think I know it. Red Byron, I think I might be looking for your trophy. Do you know where I could find it? Okay, this has to be it. I know it. The first Cup Series championship trophy, right? That is exactly right. So this trophy was won by one of our inductees, Red Byron. And it is the first trophy in what is now the Monster Energy Cup Series. So it's really great to have this important piece of history right here in Charlotte at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And it was great because he drove for a car owner, Raymond Parks, who is also one of our inductees, and the two of them had already won the 1948 Championship Series. Now that was not in what's called the Premier Series, that was in the Modified Division. So they won the 1948 season in the Modifieds, and then they went on to pair up again to win the very first Cup Series trophy. And after all these years, still as pretty and shiny and sparkly as ever. That's right, we keep it in good condition here at Ball of Fame. Kevin, you're going to need to get better with your clues here because this is a twisted piece of metal and it looks pretty cool to me. Well, it's certainly neat, but it's not cool. You were close, but everybody knows exhaust headers are really hot. And this one is double hot because it was on Davey Allison's car when he won the one hot night Winston All-Star Race. And it was great because this is the header when he was battling Kyle Petty to the line and they wanted that win so bad they wrecked each other. So even though Davey was the winner, he tore up his car and it was great because his father, one of our inductees, Bobby Allison, kept the exhaust header and donated it here to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Wow, what a cool piece of history. Well, uh, again, it's cool. All right, all right. Not the right kind of cool. I'll keep looking. Yes. Cool, cool, cool piece of history. So when you said cool, you meant literally cool. <laughs> yes, cool, twisted metal. Here it is. So that is copper tubing wrapped around basically the inside of what a fire suit might be. You know, driving a NASCAR race car is hard work. You're in the car for hours at a time. It might be hot out, and then the engine is putting out its own heat. So drivers really from the beginning of the sport have been looking for a way to stay more comfortable behind the wheel. And this was an innovative one. This was borrowed from Air Force technology. And the idea was to run cool water through these copper tubes that surround you. Uh, I don't know how successful it was, uh, but you know, innovation is part of the sport, and this certainly is innovative. Yes, definitely for the sake of our drivers, after looking at this, I am very happy that we've made the strides that we have today. <laughs> yes, technology across the board has come a long way. Well, another one down. Check it off the list. Yes. What's next for me? Let's go check it out. All right, let's see. NASCAR Hall of Fame, this is Jesse. No, I'm not busy. What's up? Oh, yeah. Taking a quick break. This is very special. You don't have to be a NASCAR fan to be able to appreciate this prestigious military award, the Purple Heart. But I will say, this is another one that I'm a little bit confused how it ties to the sport. That's right. This Purple Heart belongs to Bud Moore. And Bud Moore is one of our inductees. In fact, he was awarded five Purple Hearts for his valor overseas during World War II. So NASCAR fans know him as a brilliant mechanic, a great team owner. He, his drivers included Dale Earnhardt, Bobby Allison, Ricky Rudd, Joe Weatherly, a whole bunch of other ones. But before he was involved in NASCAR, he was a regular GI serving overseas for our country during World War II, where he was awarded various different medals and really is an American hero. Definitely someone who has made an impact not only in the sport, but also in our country. It's amazing to learn about these people that have shaped NASCAR. That's right. All right, well, check another one off the list. Let's enter the final stage and get the checkered flag. Sounds good. Let's go for it. All right. <laughs> I should 
should have known this is where it would be. Greatest finishes, of course. That's right. You found the start finish line, so here you go. Every winner gets a checkered flag. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you're exactly right. We are in the greatest finishes area at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And we're really thrilled that we have Ricky Craven's car from 2003 that crossed this very start finish line in one of the closest finishes ever in NASCAR history when he battled Kurt Busch to the line. Wow, it's been 15 years, and every time I watch this finish, I still get chills. That's right. Not only was it mathematically close, it really is one of the most exciting finishes to watch just because it's two guys. It's Ricky Craven, it's Kurt Busch, the top of their game. They both want to win so bad, and you can tell by the way they're just fighting that whole last lap. That's great racing. That's NASCAR. That's it. Right there. Speaking of great racing, I think I've done a pretty good job today, if I say so myself, right? Five for five? You've done great. You could be a curator here, maybe. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, <laughs> Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Well, Kevin, thanks again for showing me around. This has been a great learning experience. Well, thanks so much for coming to Charlotte and the NASCAR Hall of Fame. It's been a pleasure having you. Well, that's it for this episode of NASCAR U. I'm Jesse Punch. Thanks for watching. Match one of 23 that we'll be bringing you over the next 17 days. That'll be four. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's got away. Oh, once again, cracking shot. That's so pleasing here. Can he get some fortune? Oh, once again. Ali Khan's conceded. Make that 30. With shots like that. <laughs> he tried the helicopter and got away with it. That's a good start. Up in the air. Safe. Oh, and he does. Doesn't quite get the elevation. Oh, it's, it's on the outside. Oh, squeezes it in the gap. Oh, that's six. Oh, swings it away. That's massive. Oh, up in the air. Aaron, that's going to be another six. Six. Fog maximum. Cameron Delport goes downtown. That is massive. Well, I thought that was off the top edge at first. Oh, straight behind the bowler. Safe. Oh, straight behind. Wow, another terrific shot. Oh, wow, is that going to go over the roof as well? And Raza goes for another one. It will go all the way for another fog maximum. What a way to finish. Consecutive sixes. And Raza has played a blinder here. And uh, 218. That's a very imposing total. Yeah, big swing, finds the gap. Oh, squeezed away. I wonder if that was where it was intended. The car ball. And they're right back at the races and uh, successive boundaries. That's exactly what I was mentioning about. Lovely footwork. Short, pulled away. It's a fog maximum four. He dances down the track, gets enough. And they will continue to be as we see another fog maximum. Yeah. He's given that some air. Yeah. He's given that some air. And Rashid Khan has uh, given it a bit more air. Oh, he's given it some air again. And Rashid Khan has repeated the dose. The number of wickets lost. Oh, another big one up in the sky. And again, it could go all the way. Just about does. Goes for it. That will be six of the square leg. Evans now over extra cover. We're just uh, happy to get a few singles. There's the answer. Celebrates. What a win. Remarkable from Kabul. How on earth they've got victory there. Goodness only knows.
Get the best of DTA channels and internet content on your TV. Presenting Airtel Internet TV. Isn't Wi-Fi great? You can browse the web anywhere. Coffee shops, airports, libraries. But using public... Charger evening. Well, that's the team that couldn't do any wrong. Simon Helmet, right at the top. of uh, his team and Mohammad Nabi who normally like to open the bowling as well. Jaru Sharma I have the company of my good friend Ajay Mehra here with me and Bulk Legends have done very little wrong so far and uh, I suppose wouldn't be wrong to say they are favorites. Thanks Lord Charu. Yes, uh, good evening to all as well. Just losing two games now, that was important. They have been the most consistent side so far in the Afghanistan uh, Premier League. They've really played well, started off pretty well, beating uh, Kabul, then Kandahar. They lost to Pakistan Panthers by 37 runs. And after that, just losing one game against the Leopards. That was a very important uh, win for the Leopards. But overall, they've been the most consistent side as far as uh, this league is concerned so far. The team that has done a little wrong, and Brian Murgatroyd was down there catching up with one of their stars. I'm delighted to say that we've been joined by Colin Munro of the Bulk Legends. And Colin, well, despite fantastic form in the group stages, it all comes down to do or die this evening. Yeah, it uh, doesn't really give you anything for finishing top. a little bit I think but um, yeah it's going to be good. Now just give us an insight here Colin because that last game Chris Gale 73 in 22 balls you were at the other end you had the best seat in the house what's it like batting with Chris Gale? Uh, it's a little bit different he's so calm and so relaxed he doesn't sort of get out of first gear he, well, he does on the scoreboard but not not personally um, but yeah, I just kept telling him, make sure that the ball is going over the head height, not hitting it back straight towards the bowler or, or the or me on the other end. So, you know, the way he says it, don't worry, big man, it's it's, it's going to keep going. 
going. I'm feeling good today. So yeah, that was an outstanding knock. Um, he did that. He showed what he can do in the in the game before that as well. Um, and then you know that game where he just went and smashed that off spinner and um, just two overs sort of set the game up for us. Is that the game tonight? Your top order against their spinners? Yeah, I'd say so. But you know, I think the obviously since Chris has come in, that's sort of helped our top order. But I think the way the the two Eagles has played, uh, Ravi and uh, Tender have been outstanding in the middle, and you know we've actually bowled really well as well. So I think we're quite a all-round team. It's not just one thing. Um, and then we've been really good in the field. You know we've shown. Obviously we put a few catches down, but you know the guys are putting in the effort and running off the ball really well, and that's all that we can ask for. You know batting and bowling, wickets take care of themselves. Runs sometimes you're in there or, or you're not, but um, the attitude in the field's been outstanding. Colin, thanks very much for joining us, and best of luck this evening. Cheers, thank you. They're always a treat to a bat with Chris Gale, but Nangahar Lepers, they would be fired up as well. Pen cutting with the ball, with the bat, he's done a very good job. Also, their coach, Venkatesh Prasad, would be very keen because uh, they've just blown hot and cold, uh, just so winning three games in the league phase. But really, now it's all even. Stevens are uh, reaching the semi final, and you never know, they have some quality uh, spinners in the ranks. Will they come into play? Sadeep Lamich and will he play today? Going to be uh, a big news as well because he's uh, such a good prospect. Yeah, well, they started out so well. That big win against the Kandahar Knights, and at that point of time, we thought uh, Nangarha Leopards, they could be one of the favorites here. But then, of course, uh, it just went a little all right for them. Three losses in a row before they came back against Kabul Zwanan, who had a very strong team. So we know they showed glimpses of brilliance. And, of course, it was eventually the win against the Bulk Legends, which is the match they're playing again here today. Sort of a uh, dress rehearsal that, which they won to be able to cement a place in the semi-final. So it's been an up and down for the Nangarha Leopards. And uh, I wonder how they are. A lot of people, Colin Monroe, uh, Jay said that, listen, uh, forget about history. We're pretty cool. But I'm sure that a lot of the Afghan players, when they say they don't quite know the meaning of pressure, there has to be some level of nerves out there. We'll see. Uh, Brian Murgatroyd, once again, with one of the uh, stars of the Nangarhar team this time. I'm delighted to say that we've been joined by Andre Fletcher of the Nangarhar Leopards. Andre, you made quite an impact coming into uh, your first match of the tournament. 48, I think it was, to steer the side into the semi-final. How important was that from your perspective, not only the team's perspective, of course, but yours, because you've been waiting such a long time for your chance? Um, it's, you know, very good. Uh, as you said, um, having been playing, uh, we, we actually played seven games and I didn't play, unfortunately, but um, it's good that I, I got a chance and I made good use of it. Um, I did what the team actually requires, and um, I hope that I can do it the do the same tonight and even go on. Now, I suppose you could argue that you've actually got into the semi-finals through the back door because uh, obviously the other three sides in the semis have been performing really well. Does that take the pressure off you guys a little bit? Um, I, not really. Um, we all believe at, at first we, we would have uh, gotten to the semi-finals very easily. Um, saying all that, um, it, it's a game of uh, that we cannot uh, predict. And um, we haven't been playing to, all, to the best of our, our ability. We haven't been executing as well. Hopefully tonight uh, we're hoping that we, we come out and, and play an all-round game and see if we can knock out uh, the team actually that is on top. And we strongly believe, you know, knowing that we struggle to get into the semis, we have a great chance now to, to win the cup. Is the key your spinners against their top order? Yeah, um, we have very good spinners, um, Mujib and, and Z uh, Zahiri. You know, they've, they've been bowling very well, and um, we're hoping that they give us that, that great start. We, we're looking for um, try to restrict uh, our gale as, as early as possible, or even um, Mono, you know, because we know they rely very heavily on, on those two um, batters. So we, we're trying our best to see if we, as I said, get them out or restrict them as as. joining us and best of luck for this evening Brilliant. thanks very much you're welcome I made it such a big impact on the refresher exactly what happened in match number nine monthly just scoring 143 for seven uh, tennis Carty 35 you batsmen getting starts and then the leopards 118 really uh, couldn't win that one and of course legends in the end winning by 25 runs important game for them to start with and of course uh, the other league match as well legends scoring 133 for seven and the Leopards uh, winning that one by six wickets thanks to Andre Fletcher, the way he played, and Shahidi as well contributing. 
Yeah, well, there's a lot of attention on the top two, which is Gale and Monroe for Bulk Legends. But I tell you what, some of their biggest match winners are probably a little later, Bopara and Ryan Tendish Carter. So there's been a talk about what should be done first and whether the Nangarhar spinner is going to be on top or not. Or will they be bowling later and therefore uh, perhaps not as effective? Uh, what does the pitch promise today? Alistair Campbell tells us. Well, it's the business uh, end of the tournament, and it's knockout cricket from here on in. The two semi-finals and final to come. And tonight, whoever loses goes home. Whoever wins it goes into the final. What type of surface have we got uh, today? Well, let me just grab a stump here, because I just want to point out a few things initially, is that before I've said that there hasn't been uh, any scuff marks and it's looked uh, really good. Just today, I'm seeing a, a little bit of evidence of some scuff marks. And, uh, you know, the pitches have been played on a lot. We know that. They are a little bit tied. We've heard that said before as well. But I haven't really seen evidence of it. And just uh, tonight, I want to come down on the length here as well. I'll just come down a bit. And I'll just point to you, just some of the, just some of the areas here. And I just want to show them to you. And it just looks like there's a few blemishes on, on this particular surface. Having said that, in the evenings, we've seen batting be a little easier. But because the wickets are a bit older, I do think that the spinners will turn it a bit more, that the seamers, their slower balls, will grip a bit more. And that will be a little bit more on the slower side. But having said that, I still think it looks like a good surface. It by no means has got lots of gremlins in it. It'll still be good for batting. We saw Chris Gale the other night. How well did he play? So I still think it's going to be good for batting. But the pressure of a final and also just conditions that are maybe not as good as they were at the beginning of the tournament might bring the scores down a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. Now that's an important point he makes because uh, the spinners might come into play with those uh, cracks uh, just opening up a bit. But still, uh, he reckons Alistair is going to be a good surface. Uh, the crowd just building in. It's going to be a big game. The first semi-final. Some big names playing as well. Chris Gale, Colin Munro. Not to forget Andre Fletcher. So it's going to be really interesting. And uh, what happened at the toss? Well, Alistair Campbell was there with the two captains. Well, we're at the sharp end of the tournament now. It's knockout cricket from here on in. You win, you go through to the final, you lose, you're out of the tournament. And uh, the two protagonists in uh, the first semi-final, Mrs. Cutting and uh, Nubby from uh, Nangaha Leopards, the bulk legends, and uh, the match referee, as ever, David Jukes. Mohammed, you got the coin. Heads is the call. What is that, David? Oh, it's a tail. Right, mate, uh, you've won the toss. What are you going to do? Yeah, we'll bet first here today. Okay, any particular reason for that? What do you make of the strip? No, the pitch will be same from the start from the uh, till, till end. Uh, it's a big game. We will uh, put a big, a big total on the board. That will be. Okay, you're not, you okay, good. You're not worried about due later? Uh, no, but it's not uh, that much uh, due later on because the weather is uh, very good. And for the last two, uh, two three, three days, uh, night game, is there's no due as well. Uh. Okay, I mean, you, you were first in the, the tournament, but that's beside the point now. This is knockout cricket. This is serious cricket now. You need to win to get into that final. Yeah, we will uh, put a 110% on that game as well because this is, this is the knockout uh, game. If you if you win the game and go through to the final, if you lose, go home. Okay. <laughs> you made any changes for this important game? Yeah, we have one change. Gulbadin is playing today. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Big Ben, I'll get you in here. Yeah. What would you have done? Probably bowled. Okay, any particular reason for that? Uh, well we were talking about the Jew, but I just heard Nabi say there's no Jew tonight, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay, I mean, uh, the tournament for you, a bit up and down, but you've managed to scrape your way into these playoffs, and now it's just uh, two games and you win the trophy. That's right, that's the beauty of a five-team tournament. When four teams go through, you're always in the mix. Um, so, you know, we'll play our best cricket tonight, hopefully, and um, you know, see what happens after 40 overs. What have you said to the troops to motivate them and, uh, you know, prepare them for this big game? Not a lot at all. We've kept it very relaxed today. Uh, you know, it's not every day you play a final, but when you do, you, you're best leaving all that baggage on the side of the field and just going out there to have fun and, you know, express yourself. And that's generally when you play your best cricket. Okay, any changes for your side? Uh, Ibrahim Zidran is come in for Raman Shah. Good luck for today. Thank you. Right, there we go. That's the news from our chair in the middle. The bulk legends have won the top, and Mohammed Nabi has elected to bat first. So that's pretty interesting as well because both the captains getting what they wanted as far as uh, bulk are concerned in a big game. They want to get runs on the board. They're exactly what uh, Mohammed Nabi mentioned and did uh, also say probably not much due. Both the empires are walking in for this game. All in redness here. And what an atmosphere, Charo. Oh, yeah, fabulous. It's always been uh, for this league here. Today, uh, many more people in. It is the business end. I just wonder who they're supporting because, uh, after all, it's uh, cricket Afghanistan, really, that's uh, the winner here. And uh, regardless of who the crowds are supporting, I hope that we have a fantastic match. Down to the wire once again. We've had some great finishes, including the last match uh, of virtually the last ball or two. I was just, a, well, I'm not surprised, but, um, um, you know, Bulk was back there batting. 
So Mohammed Nabi was quite happy to bat first, but that also means that they're not really concerned about uh, the Nangarha spin because if they were, they would have uh, possibly uh, made sure that they would bowl later and be negated a bit. But uh, showing immense confidence in this pair, particularly, and of course, we know Ajay, if Gale gets going, then he can just wrench the match away from the other team. But if he goes early, I wonder how much of a psychological advantage that Nangarhar can gain. So that's bulk. And of course, Galem no right at the top. But uh, Rasuli is pretty useful for them. But that pair at four and five, that's a big match winning pair, the all rounders, Dishkart and Bopara. Mohamed Nabi, of course, can hit the ball a long way as well. He hasn't succeeded in the last game or two, but trust him to come there and up that run rate because uh, no pressure. They're batting first, nothing to chase as such. And then Golbadin Naib can also hit the ball a long way. Yeah, as far as uh, the Leopards are concerned, Rema Shah, he misses out. Um, Abraham Zadran, he comes into the playing 11. Uh, once again, with Andre Fletcher getting runs, uh, is with the first game he played. The batting looks much better now. That's one area where they really weren't consistent. The batting department overall, the bowling has been absolutely brilliant. Mujibur Rahman, the spinner Zahir Khan has uh, really bowled well along with the captain Ben Cutting, who's bowled those youth with the new ball in the middle overs so overall i think now they have that depth in the batting and that's going to be interesting this man the universe boss out there really played well in the last game 73 of 22 was uh, the man of the match as well um, just see that strike rate up so far in the apl 172 he's got a big uh, knock in the last game so he'll be high in confidence and that of rasuli 131 runs for him just see the strike rate 141 for him 150 is a very good bat as well so all in redness now Anil Chaudhary uh, from India, from the ICC panel as well, is indicating there's going to be Chris Gale, the southpaw on strike, the left-hander, slip in place now for Naveen ul -Haq. Again, a young man who's been very impressive, four wickets for him. So the first ball of the first semi-final. Yeah, keeping Gale quiet, tucking him up, no room, of course, sir. Uh, Hamid Hammer Hassan, uh, the Afghanistan captain who commentates with us, does keep calling Naveen the professor. He's still pretty young. And uh, so he's obviously a thinking bowler, Anil Chaudhary, the umpire at uh, the business end right now, and uh, his colleague today at Square Leg. He's uh, also got to keep sharp, Emma Shah Pakhtin. And uh, also, uh, Venki Prasad was talking very highly about Naveen's talent. He was very happy to have Mujib as well. And we know that the spinners will hope to come good today. Oh, cutting it across, across Gale, a little bit of movement as well. And, Ajay, uh, what worries me a bit when Alistair was reading the pitch, that if there is a possibility of uh, an uneven bounce, then we're into a uh, little bit of trouble. Now, that didn't rise at all. So, mm, something for the batsman to be just a little more careful about today. Yeah, you're right, because uh, there wasn't much carry there, because uh, whether we could keep a collective that one way down, getting a bit of lateral movement as well, that should... Uh, be interesting for him because uh, he can move the ball around. Naveen got a good action as well, good rhythm he runs in. Well, that could be wide. Is it the first run? Yes, it is. Well, in that effort to keep cutting it across Gale, just overdoing it a bit, Naveen. And then let's see what we have here in the field. Uh, before that, just to check on the wicket. Now, Alistair was mentioning a couple of indentations in the middle which may come into play. Otherwise, of course, we've got the Shar Jashin there. You saw an indentation right there, which is at the uh, sort of a good length uh, spot and a few there as well. So you don't want to pay them too much attention, but you do want to be aware that uh, playing shots too early may get you into trouble if there is variable bounce. Yeah, I think that's a uh, natural wear and tear because uh, two strips have been used so far in the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League here in Sharjah. So that's a natural wear and tear. And uh, although I think the curator, the uh, ground staff, Charu, they've done a wonderful job. They really worked very hard day in, day out, never easy. But still, uh, that's uh, just a natural uh, part of because uh, the cracks are just opening up. But mentioning about Chris Gale, well, didn't start off too well. But uh, the last game uh, really batted well, 73. Before that, uh, didn't play a game, just uh, got a break, then 80. So didn't start off too well. But uh, is he just peaking at the right time? That's the big question now. Drifting down leg. And, uh, oh, no single taken there. I think that's pretty smart because Rasuli knows that Chris Gale would be a little unhappy to try and sprint across. And even though Gale uh, was keen enough, oh, <laughs> that's the previous match, just stands there and delivers. And the bowlers really lose it a bit, saying, where do we ball to him now? <laughs> yes, 73 of 22. And that was a knock. That was uh, Chris Gale storm that arrived here in Sharjah. Some brilliant hitting from him. Uh, some uh, clean hitting, great striking. And uh, looked in great touch, Chris Gale, in the last game. 
and very quiet just pushes it away to leg so gale of course does have a couple of gears he can be very quiet and then suddenly of course when he explodes balls fly around and uh, the traffic on uh, one side of the ground where there's a road better watch it when chris does get going i wonder if there are any nerves here at all because all the time ajay that we've talked to uh, the skippers and many other players they don't seem to understand the concept of pressure but surely there are butterflies in the stomach surely there are some nerves out there especially for the younger lot yeah, I think, you know, because it's such a crunch game, it's uh, the semi-finals, like a knockout game, you lose this one, you're out, whatever you've done in the past just evens out, doesn't matter really. Nangar, uh, as uh, we were just had a chat as well with uh, Ben Cutting, did mention now, they didn't start out well, they were uh, up and down in the tournament, but really evens out. So far, a very good over from Naveen. They're going to bring it in to Rasuli. Yeah, didn't quite find the timing, had the space, so a very quiet opening over for the batting side too, for none. इस मोबाइल को कोई चुरा सकता है और इस मोबाइल से आप किसी का दिल चुरा सकते हैं पॉप का छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से दिल चुरा लो Bulk Legends uh, win the toss, batting first, well, as uh, Charu was mentioning, Tenders cut and Rayu Par at number four, number five, they run really well. They bat deep, because uh, Mohamed Nabi very decent with the bat. He can play some cameos, Ikram as well, Gulbadi Nayak back into the playing 11. They missed the last one, so really that's the strength that Bulk Legends have. Okay, Majib. Oh, was that an edge? How did it miss everything? We'll find out soon, but was that an early opportunity? Mujib is such a clever bowler, so young, but already appreciated around the world. Yeah, right on the button there, great delivery to start with. Was playing for the turn, wasn't there, not even uh, getting some back to it there. But I think this is a very good move here from uh, the captain, uh, bringing him on straight away, Mujib. You're looking for wickets. It's a good captaincy by Ben Cutting, getting his strike ball early from the Sharjah club end. The only advantage, of course, that the batsmen currently have and have uh, in all the power plays is the fact that even a miss it may carry all the way to the boundary. Ah, very quiet again, Gale, and he wants a quick single. Yeah, uh, very reluctantly takes off and then has to speed a bit. A quiet start from the big man. But Charu, the thing with Mujib is, you know, I've seen a few international games that Afghanistan have played and the captain really relies on him uh, with the new ball. He knows how to bowl with the new ball. He's got those variations. And the biggest thing is, you know, because uh, there is that uh, shine on the ball, to grip the ball for a spin are never easy. But that control he possesses, that's absolutely outstanding. Rasuli will be on strike now. Hasn't got off the mark, just facing one delivery the last over. The two men uh, on the boundary, long on and uh, deep square. Uh, short fine will ensure that there's no run there. A little unlucky, Rasuli. Either side of him, at least a single, if not more. But a good start here from Mujib. He's uh, bowling really well. Win the stumps, not giving much room to the batsmen. Mixing it well. Oh, that's a very delivery. As I mentioned, he's bowling well. He just sits down the leg side. The right call as well from the Empire. Yeah, got away with that. A little bit of bat, and that would be our first fog boundary. Not yet. Thank you for something, please. So far, once again, drifting down leg. And this could be the first boundary. A lot of work for that deep square to do. And the ball hit him. So, a welcome boundary. It's been a quiet, sedate start for the Bulk Legends. They will welcome that fog. Saluriza. Yes, yeah, started out well, but uh, the last two deliveries have it down the leg uh, side, uh, down the pad line. Easy pickings there. The placement was the key. Fog four. Nicely played, uh, just clipping it. Rasuli. Bowling against a left hand combination. Never easy for any bowler. Disappointed a touch there. Once again, down leg. It could be a repeat. And once again, the ball will win. So very good over, ruined by the last two deliveries. Down leg, easy pickings for Rasuli. It's 12 and after two. India may important people, cricket team owners hote hai. So, maybe team bana rahi hoon, 11 wickets pe. Naam, Sunny Sultans ya Sunny Showstoppers? Sub 11 wickets.com pe team bana rahe hai. Ye koi gyan nahi, gyan ki kemai hai.
touch expensive in his uh, opening over Mujib. This is exactly what transpired last ball previous. So once again, clipping it very nicely. Almost action replay of the uh, previous shot. So expensive uh, over. Naveed was impressive in his opening over. Just conceding two runs. Yeah, very disappointing by Mujib, uh, I suppose. Just a bit thrown off. I know it's uh, an old cliche in cricket, but the right-left combination got it wrong to the right-hander. And Gale, again, cannot time it. But uh, he could try and take two here if he wishes. Oh, he does. This is rare, folks. Watch it. Gale with a double. Yeah, absolutely. Just seeing uh, the captain out there, Ben Cutting, was a bit uh, far away as well. Also feeling his uh, left thigh on that occasion. He's got a big role to play with the bat, with the ball as well. Just stretching himself near the uh, skirting. Yeah, Cutting skipper has given everything for a team. Carrying a niggling injury. And Gale slashes it away. Got plenty of it. Found the gap. That's another fog, Salu Riza. And finally, the big man is away with what he likes to do best, hitting boundaries. That's a Gale special. Just picks up the lens so quickly, gets into a position, hammers it on the offside. That's a cracking shot. He's off up in style there. Chris Gale, first foot for him, coming in style. So suddenly, uh, the run's coming now. You saw that in the last over two boundaries and one so far in this one. Nothing very wrong with that delivery. Gale just took heavy toll. On oh, no, leg this time, and will that be a first six? No, one bounce. It was dangerous at Porter, the higher part of the bat for Gale, yet he went through it. And uh, that's consecutive boundaries now, and Naveen will be wondering, what do I do? Cut across the big man or bowl at his pads? Both looking dangerous right now, both options. Yeah, the key there was the placement, because he just waited uh, a fraction of a second and knew exactly that Ben Cutting was just waiting for that one, uh, knew exactly uh, with the fielders were one bounce uh, over the skirting. So really uh, looking in good touch so far. Chris Gale started off slowly, but making a move now. 12 of 11. Well, the professor needs to figure out some new equation here against Chris Gale. Bounces, and Gale very lucky to get away with that top edge. It could go for another boundary. That's three consecutive, but Gale was not in control. Yeah, they said luck favors a brave. Uh, he's been uh, batting pretty well at exactly what he did in the last game. And this time, uh, wasn't control a little lucky on that occasion. Could have really gone anywhere. There was a field of red shot, fine leg, just eluding him. Just mixing his pace on that occasion, Naveen. Yeah, Gale was through his shot before the ball came. And then uh, still a very late decision by him to put some bat on that ball. Clever ball by Naveen, we've got to say. But uh, cruel, the result eventually. Ah, similar ball. <laughs> and once again, he tricks Chris Gale. The slow bouncer. And Gale thought uh, three times about what should I do here. Till eventually, he did very well to leave it. You know, sometimes I just have a feeling, Charu, that uh, as a seam bowler, you've got to try those yorkers as well early on. We saw uh, Gale in one of the league games uh, being uh, castled by Udana. So you've got to try something different against him. You know, that uh, conventional length at times. Because he's just waiting for that. Anything in the slot. Expensive so far. Again, down leg, not very clever, only two men allowed outside the ring. And Chris Gale exploits that. Well, Naveen just lost it a bit there. Only two runs in the first over, but 18 of his second. It's 30 for none after three. I was in the house, I was in the I was in the house. So, no, Sabki, Karo, Tilki. Did you score zero? Yeah, 295. You have been in the Tilki. So suddenly it's a very bright start here for the bulk legends, exactly what they required. Fazal Niazai coming on from the Sharia club end. Uh, so uh, Majib has been taken off after that expensive over from him. Six wickets for him. Once again, uh, last ball previous over, if you see the way he was uh, batting, striking a few fours, some lovely shots coming from his blade. Then this was a bit lucky, the third boundary. But really, uh, he just lost it, you felt. Never easy bowling against this man, Chris Gale. Such a brilliant stroke player. Well, thank you guys for being here at the Sharjah Cricket Ground. Hope you're enjoying this, regardless of which side it finishes. I think Afghanistan cricket can be very proud 
of uh, what they've showcased here. So, first out, Niazai comes in as Majib takes a bit of a break. Right on target. That's what you want. Give no room and keep decent length. Keep it simple. Fazal starts well, as they all did. You've got to finish well, too. Yeah, just get the basics right. That's important. Rasuli, uh, well, uh, he's batted well in a few games, getting starts against Dangar, 50 versus uh, Kabul against the Pakhtia Panthers, 44. Before that, didn't get too many opportunities uh, to bat or play in the playing 11. But he's uh, utilized uh, most of those opportunities once he's come in into the playing 11, drafted in. Good talent as well. He's a regulation bat, if I can say that. Just like to play straight, play according to the merit of the ball. And yet, of course, when it's loose, that's put it away very effectively. And in form, which is why they picked him. Johnson Charles uh, for Angarhar Leopards will hope to try and get them to a good start when they finally play. He's been up and down a bit, but uh, he'll be happy that he's been drafted into the playing 11 for this first semi-final. A uh, vital cog in their wheel as an opener. I think Ben Cutting would be realizing the fact that they have to get uh, Chris Gale early. That's very important for them. That's going to be imperative for them. If they have to really uh, stem the flow of runs uh, in the first six overs, Chris Gale is going to be uh, the wicket they want. And on uh, Dave Sitch as well, uh, such a key batsman for the uh, well, most consistent for him. Yeah, just a quick word about Dev Sitch. He uh, is uh, the number one batsman for the Nagara Leopards. He runs or so, and he'll be the key. Oh, unlucky. <laughs> Struck the stump, so no run there. Could have been at least uh, one or two. He didn't really catch the sweet spot of the bat. But that's clever. You've been mentioning um, Yorkers, at least privately in the past, and that, that was pretty close to it. Yeah, this is exactly what you've got to try, because uh, you're just squeezing that one out, playing with the full face of the bat. But this is the length you've got to bowl. Not uh, very frequently, but just that's got to be the surprise win for you against Chris Gale. So four balls, just one run. Got to finish well, Napaza. Oh, and he does! What a shame that that way uh, may go for four. No, brought back well in by Majib. Done. I have to say, not uh, great keeping there. And uh, unluckily for Puzzle, he just missed the leg stump. Close shave there for Chris Gale. Yeah, that was painlessly close. Very close there, but in the end, uh, doing pretty well. Sliding there, uh, stopping a few runs. Uh, Mujib, such a good outfield. Lush green, uh, giving his all. Every but really, a uh, good bowling there. He's been impressive so far. He's got to continue the good work. Last ball of the over now. Once again, Fuller. Oh, that's dealt very nicely. One bounce. Going to be a fog four to end the fourth over. It's 37 for no loss. White shirts. Kitne plain or simple? Fog and plain or simple white shirt ko bana de special or fashionable fox scent new fashion wear for men well, it was a quiet start for bulk legends winning six out of their eight matches they are in superb form that's in the league stage of course this time just getting a slightly wrong puzzle and uh, there isn't much margin for error if it's not a yorker it becomes a half volley or a low full toss and that's the reaction of the bowler usually when that happens because you tend to go, especially during the power play overs, for some big runs. And what I liked there was uh, when with the full face of the bat, Chris Gale, really coming back to the form. Mochi once again coming on, change of ends for him. Started off from the uh, Sharjah club end, now coming on from the other end. Really locked, uh, relies on his shoulders. Uh, he's the experienced bowler, he's done really well in this format. Just on the bottom right, uh, the highest and lowest scores for bulk in the power play, 85 for none. Well, how do you lose a match from there? And of course, lowest 44, uh, losing one wicket. Uh, they are now 38. Uh, they've got almost two overs to get past their lowest. We think that should be easy to surpass, but I'm not so sure they're going to get to 85. It was a quiet start, and the bowlers haven't done too much wrong, but uh, they are up against the, well, the most destructive batsman in world cricket. Leans back, has plenty of time. The slightly short and over deep mid wicket for our fog. Spagiza. What a strike there. Picks up the length very quickly. Gets into a great position. Chris Gale knew exactly. Uh, the ball was a touch shot and just swing of the arms up. Uh, that battle was tremendous. Much better. Would come back by Mujib. 
but uh, we hope that the young man is not going to lose his nerve because after being hit for a six off the first delivery sometimes you can try and do too much but i suspect he likes bowling to left-handers it was only against rasuli that he made some errors earlier on his first over again drifting down leg no cover there and uh to deep square that's another for salu Reza. chris gale now continues to deal in boundaries he will be loving this situation already 34 from only 20. yeah another expensive over would you so far well, the margin of error is minimal when you're bowling to this man. Uh, really, the swing of the arms is uh, looking in great touch at the moment, Chris Gale. It's going to be a big threat. Well, Much better. Well, the point is to not drift to the pads of Chris Gale because you'll be taken for many. Of course, we do have a long on and a deep mid wicket. But uh, you got to keep it very tight, Mujib. Otherwise, the big man will cart you over the boundary line. As he tries again, could be in the gap. And it is. Well, he didn't again perhaps get the sweet spot of the bat. But uh, well, 52, they cross 50 for none. And it's only five over. So great start for Bulk. Aksar log mere baare mein kehte hain ki main apne dil ki sunta hu. Aap bhi na apne dil ki karo. Ree ho giri karo. Phone uthao aur India ka sabse exciting game My Team 11 download karo. अपने दिल की टीम बनाओ और दबा के कमाओ वो माला माला है नमा ब्लैक शर्ट कितने प्लेन और सिंपल फॉक्स एंड प्लेन और सिंपल ब्लैक शर्ट को बना दे स्पेशल और फैशन में फॉक्स एंड न्यू फैशन वेयर फॉर मैन फाइजल नियाजाइ getting ready for his second over operating from the Sharjah club end Rasuli with lots of bottom hand works that backward of square just a single let's have a look at the last ball of the previous over in fact the last three boundaries from that previous over powered uh, over uh, wide long on whip through square leg and then again through wide long on brutal from gale 15 off that last over and gale looking in ominous touch two half centuries for him already in the tournament remember 73 in 22 balls yesterday to ruin kandahar's hopes of reaching this stage of the tournament seven fours and a six to him thus far and then cutting with plenty to think about Little bit of width. Gale clears the front leg and goes through cover. Again, brutal stuff. Alistair Campbell alongside me. Good evening to you, Alistair. Evening, Brian. Evening, everybody. Yeah, he's the man for the big occasion. Loves it. Loves the attention. Loves to play at his best when the stakes are at their highest, Chris Gale. And I tell you what, he's uh, turning it on here in this semi final. And in this form of the game, the shorter version of the game, one man can make the difference between winning and losing that's how it is we saw in the previous game 70 he got to 22 deliveries and he's well on his way again here 42 of 23 at this stage oh he's uh, carved that over square leg that's another boundary not sure whether it uh, pitched just in front or just over the empire seems to be uh, long-sighted and he's made the judgment already so uh, that's just uh, before and it's been signaled uh, for so too wide on the previous delivery trying to straighten up trying to bowl the yorker and all he'll toss and he's spot on the umpire a foot or so inside the line alarm bells ringing here for the nangaha leopards alistair you and i were chatting off mic earlier have the Leopards made a mistake with not including the experience of Mitchell McClenaghan to go against Gale in this power play? Well, when it's panning out the way it has, then hindsight's a wonderful thing. I think uh, you're spot on. They needed a guy like that, I reckon, in uh, this lineup in this important game. Knowing full well that you had Mujib, and he would cause a few problems, as he has done the world over, really, to uh, all manner of means of batsmen. But I think Mitchell McClenaghan playing for the Mumbai Indian papers and the teams played in uh, big games I do think that uh, he would have been 
a prudent inclusion, put it that way, in uh, the lineup this evening. Of course, if McLennan plays, you have to leave one of your uh, other overseas players out. Johnson Charles would have been one of the ones under the microscope if uh, that selection call had been made. Down the ground, just over off. Darwish Rasuli joins the party. That's his third four. And he's very much in the slipstream of Chris Gale and going very nicely indeed. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's been betting number three in the tournament and the opportunity to open innings here with Chris Gale. He's uh, doing a decent job of it, Rasuli, at the moment. He's only faced 10 balls, but he's got 15. And at the moment, it's 66 for none. It's a very healthy power play period. Oh, got ball to uh, end the six over. 14 from the last over of the power play. 66 for none. इस मोबाइल को कोई चुरा सकता है और इस मोबाइल से आप किसी का दिल चुरा सकते हैं और अब छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से दिल चुरा लो यू मेंशन द वर्ड ऑमिनस ब्राइन मर्गेट्रोइड देर लास्ट गेम अगेंस्ट द कैंडर हार नाइट्स 85 फॉर नाइन इन द पावर प्ले and today, 66 for none. So they're saving their best for last, it would seem, the bulk legends. And if Chris Gale stays there for uh, a little while longer, I'll tell you what, this could be uh, a very big total indeed. They need a breakthrough, they need a wicket. Preferably this bloke, but <laughs> just to get uh, the belief back, the confidence back. And this is going to be a very interesting passage of play. See how he plays the spin. Zahir Khan into the attack. We've spoken about that power play. It is actually Bolt's highest power play when they've batted first. Their previous highest power play when they batted first was 63 without loss against Kabul. And remember, they went on and scored uh, 244 in that match. Plenty for Ben Cutting to reflect upon thus far. That's his game face. He's got a reputation for being a smiley, jolly character, Chris Gale, but, uh, well, when he's in the middle, there's nothing to smile about, particularly when you're an opposition bowler. Six. Oh, goodness me, that was brutal. That is right out the middle of the bat. Not a lot of elevation, but plenty of distance. And 50 up as well for the universe boss of just 28 deliveries. It's a knockout game, it's a semi-final, and he's come to the party big time. Nine fours, two sixes, and a strike rate of just under 200. Two full from Zahir Khan, and all Anton Devsic can do is turn around and ask a member of uh, the crowd to throw it back. Googly. Gale's half centuries in the tournament, 80 off 48 balls against Kabul, and 73 yesterday in 22 balls against Kandahar. Here's that six again. Straight into the dressing room. Smash the window. Mind the broken glass. I think he would have had the decency to hit it into the opposition dressing room, wouldn't you? He wants all eyes on him. That's why he's hit it there. Hey, everyone out, I pay attention. I'm in full flow here. Oh, there's an innovative method to stop it. If you can't get down with your hands, then uh, get the right boot out. Effective in the end. By hook or by crook, he wants to keep Rasuli on strike. Doesn't want. Chris Gale down that end, so he'll do all that it takes. 
joking aside, I've seen bowlers um, twist their ankles very nastily from that sort of scenario. That's the end of the over. Seven overs gone, 74 without loss. I was going to be a big one. I was going to be a big one. So, now, Sabki, Karo, Dilki. The test score is 0 out. Yeah, 295. आप बिना अपने दिल की करो ही रोगी रोगी फोन उठाओ और इंडिया का सबसे टाइटिंग है माइकिंग लैब डाउनलोड करो वो माला माला है ना माँ ब्लैक कलेक्शन फ्रॉम फॉग परफ्यूम बॉडी स्प्रे आउटलास्ट द पार्टी फाइनल ऑफ द गुलबहार अफगानिस्तान प्रीमियर लीग पावर्ड बाय फॉग बेन कटिंग इनटू द अटैक Ben cutting out of the blocks uh, well, like a, a pedigree racehorse at the start of the tournament. Got eight wickets in his first two matches, including that five for 28 against Kandahar. But troubled by uh, an ankle injury thereafter. Chris Gale. What a 50 from him his third of the tournament this is why he's an icon player in this Gulbaha Afghanistan Premier League a little bit of good fortune there with that top edged paddle hook but otherwise just brutal down the ground long on and long off in danger out there's the breakthrough Oh, it was so necessary, wasn't it? And Ben Cutting's got it. Naveen ul Haq with the catch at long on. And how important will that be in the final analysis? Nangahar on the board at last, and Cutting makes the breakthrough. Benjamin, you beauty, they cry. As the Nangahar Leopards get a huge breakthrough. Bought himself into the attack as uh, captain. Wanted to lead from the front. Wanted to get that first breakthrough. And Chris Gale has powered one down the ground, but straight to Naveen ul Haq. And he takes a very important catch in this very important game. A clap of the hands from Ben Culling, but what an innings it's been from Chris Gale. 54 of just 30 delivery. Man of the match ko ye milta hai. Lekin isse, is tak banne mein din o lag jate hai. Lekin 11 wickets pe game khatam hote hi instant cash. 11 wickets app download karo. Apni team banao aur jito instant cash. इस मोबाइल को कोई चुरा सकता है और इस मोबाइल से आप किसी का दिल चुरा सकते हैं हॉक का छोटा मोबाइल पैक वेल क्रिस गेल would certainly be in most uh, t most people's fantasy teams. I think you've got the opportunity to make your own fantasy team at myteam11.com where you can test your skills against uh, others and also win real cash. Perhaps Colin Monroe would be in your fantasy team as well. He's been uh, a quiet achiever for the bulk legends in this tournament. No half centuries, but some steady contributions. I guess it's the way Chris Gale plays, and we love him for it, but um, was this wholly necessary, uh, Alistair? Oh, he was just wanting to continue to stamp his authority on the game. And uh, Ben Cutting, he's relieved that uh, he wasn't able to get underneath that. Not out the middle of the bat, but he's still done some damage. He's still got them off to a very fast start here. They're going to have to uh, play some claw back here, the Nangahar Leopards. Because I tell you what, they don't want to be chasing uh, 200 plus, especially in a game such as this. They're looking for two. They're not going to get it. I guess from Chris Gale's perspective, he can go hard like that and continue to go hard after a fast start, purely and simply because he knows the quality that comes after him in the batting lineup. Because there are four overseas players in the Bulk Legends lineup, and all of them 
a top order batsman because uh, obviously after Colin Munro, you've got Ravi Bopara and Ryan Tendiskata. Yeah, and then at the end just throw in Muhammad Nabi. So <laughs> it's a really well balanced lineup. On paper, there's no doubt about it. It's, uh, it's quality, it's class. They just have to deliver when it counts. And so far, so good. End of eight, 78 for one. Sasural Genda Pool. Smell. इस मोबाइल से आप लोगों से दूर हो जाते हैं और इस मोबाइल से लोग आपके पास आ जाते हैं पॉक का छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से नजदीकियां बढ़ा लो lineup that we've spoken about Gale, Rasuli, Munro, Tendiscata, Bopara and Nabi. Without even Gulbadeen Nabe, who's uh, batted in the top order for Afghanistan in one-day international cricket and T20 uh, internationals as well. He's down at number eight, and Mervez Ashraf, who's quite capable of swinging the willow at number nine. They bet a long way down to bulk, so that's why Gail can afford to uh, go hard in the way that he did. Zahir Khan, the left-arm wrist spinner. Players running hither and thither. We've got a short mid-wicket in now. Or Colin Munro. Top edge. But it's still gone all the way for six. Zahir Khan can't figure it out. There was a deep backward square leg and a deep mid-wicket. I'm certain Munro didn't get this out of the middle. But he's still got enough of it to uh, produce a Spagiza. Yeah. All the players have talked about the short boundary. This is uh, the shorter of the two. He's taken it on. Not out the middle of the bat, but enough on it to get it uh, just over the boundary. But that's all you need. I tell you what, big appeal, but <laughs> that's uh, not going to be out. That's uh, nowhere near in line. Well, he's playing a few shots, yeah, Munro. He's not afraid to go orthodox sweep on that occasion. Trying to play the unorthodox, the reverse sweep. A line, not the reverse sweep. That would be the switch hit. Where you turn the, the hands around on the handle and really have a heave over to Kevin Peterson put it brilliantly in his grip so it's something that he would have practiced and probably uh, if you don't know which way it's turning which uh, maybe he's struggling with against this bloke so he can't then the horizontal back shot is the way to go conventional and unconventional just going along your uh, uh, selection story Ramat Shah as well, not playing as well as uh, Mitchell McLenahan in this Nangahar side. It's very interesting. Well, there we go. There's that switch. That's what I'm talking about. It's not a reverse sweep. He's changed the grip. 
and uh, he's tried to smash it with uh, a left a right-handed motion I should say because he is a left-hander and trying to heave it away over the the offside well that's an interesting selection as well I thought maybe it might be due to injury but he's on the field here as a substitute Naveen al Haq has just left the field and Ramachar on the field probably paying the price for not enough runs but I, I thought his leg spin was uh, pretty handy in the tournament as well so with those two out of side makes for very uh, interesting selection discussion that they must have had yes Ramit Shah just 87 runs an average of 12 but six wickets oh. just pick up the single there and there is Ramit Shah right on cue yeah, it's an interesting one just before a, a huge game as well he's a big player played a lot for Afghanistan just having a an indifferent tournament but he's uh, taken some very wickets as well and I just think would have been a really good spinning option as well if Majib obviously there so here Khan and he's also bowled a few overs and the pretty well but deciding that maybe just hadn't scored the volume of runs that's been required of him my name is bowled 88 for one aksar log mere baare mein kehte hain ki veeru kisi ki nahi sunta galat kehte hain main apne dil ki sunta hu aap bhi na apne dil ki karo veeru giri karo phone utha आओ और इंडिया का सबसे एक्साइटिंग गेम माय टीम इलेवन डाउनलोड करो अपने दिल की टीम बनाओ और दबा के कमाओ वो माला माला है नमा बेन कटिंग हैज बीन सक्सेसफुल Was this a no ball? Yes, it was. Cutting the uh, the return crease. It wasn't called by uh, umpire Anil Chowdhury. New bowler into uh, the attack. Ibrahim Zadran. amazing that uh, this is actually his debut in the tournament he's not played before in uh, the Gulbaha Afghanistan Premier League what a time to blood him yeah and uh, to come in in place of Ramachar as well I would have thought you wanted all the experience for a crunch game but they've decided that uh, this bloke is uh, the go-to and he's gonna have to come in and uh, he's doing a job now with ball in hand but, but his main job is to come in and score some runs and on debut in a semi-final he's gonna have to have nerves of steel but they've obviously seen it enough of him seen enough in him and I think that uh, his constitution deserves a crack 16 years of age 16 years and 311 days oh I would have loved that stubble at 16 eh Murgers wouldn't mind it now at 50 something as Andre Fletcher gave us a very nice interview before the start of play today Zadran played for the uh, Bambi e Amir Dragons in the Spagiza 2020 tournament that you saw in uh, Kabul last September Alistair up three wickets well, that's clobbered over backward point Razuli he's uh, been under the radar in this inning so far but with shots like that he'll soon come very much uh, into the forefront of everyone's thinking that's his fourth four not a great delivery it was uh, wide allowed uh, Rasuli to free his arms he didn't uh, get it right out the middle of the bat but square enough to beat uh, the sweeper out there as well and race away for four clobbered through extra cover misfield inside the ring 
Is Ramat Shah still on as a substitute for Naveen Ul Haq? Razuli, four fog boundaries, and uh, Colin Munro, one maximum for him. Well, they'll be hoping that uh, Naveen Ul Haq will get back onto the field because, of course, he really is a, a master at the death for the Nangahar Leopards. Oh, third man up in the circle. That'll go for four and bring up the hundred. The bulk legends are flying. An over that cost 13 takes them to 101 for one at the halfway stage of their inning. इस मोबाइल को कोई चुरा सकता है और इस मोबाइल से आप किसी का दिल चुरा सकते हैं फॉक का छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से दिल चुरा लो So decent start here for the uh, bulk legends doing really well thanks to Chris Gale's uh, brilliant half century once again. Munro up. He's got the style. Rasuli looking good. Just making a move on now. Going to be uh, the captain once again. Ben cutting a big uh, responsibility on his shoulders. Decent uh, first over getting that important wicket. Just thought probably he could have uh, used the new ball as well early on. Just the kind of experience he's got and the way he's bowled throughout. Uh, in the league phase has been very impressive nicely played uh, we'll pick up another run here let's go down to Charu and see who he's got with him thank you so much Ajay Venki thanks so much for joining us rough start for you the first quarter of the match 101 a uh, little past turnovers not quite going according to plan today uh, sort of yes of course uh, I mean um, we, we had certain uh, plans certain strategies for uh, for especially Chris Gale but then uh, yeah I mean he's his uh, He's a terrific batsman, um, um, but still, uh, we, we tried our best. I think we, uh, in a few occasions, we did uh, execute our plans, um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, he got away with a few runs. Uh, but that's okay. Since we got him out now, uh, it's fine. I think we need, to, we, can, we need to make a comeback now, isn't it? Yeah. I know. It's, uh, all, it's all about taking wickets. Uh, that's what uh, builds pressure on the batsman. Uh, you know, in retrospect, you'll be pretty happy. Gail, you got for 50 and he's back. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... Uh, see, you need to, you need to, of course, uh, I've, I've seen uh, what's been happening is the first six overs has always been, uh, there'll be uh, quite a few runs being scored, but the moment you get a wicket or two, uh, the run rate comes down quite drastically, and that's something which we uh, should be looking to do now. I need to congratulate you for making the final four. That was a big step, of course. <laughs> However, give us a sense of the team talk before the semi-final. What was the, the general discussion all about? Uh, well, look, it's, it's important for us to uh, go out there and enjoy ourselves. Uh, express our, uh, our uh, you know, uh, feelings and express our uh, talent um, there in the middle. Uh, uh, what I've seen uh, in Af the Afghanistan, uh, in Afghanistan, the talent is outstanding. Yeah, and even in our team as well, we have got some fantastic uh, uh, players. So it's just, uh, it's just that uh, letting them uh, go there and express themselves and uh, have some fun. And of course, they're playing with uh, some very big uh, players like a Ben Cutting. And uh, it's just unfortunate that we don't have uh, Dre Ross. Um, yeah, otherwise they would have uh, they would have got to learn quite a, uh, quite a bit. Oops, that didn't go too well either. All right, uh, what kind of a total did you say? Listen, we've got enough batting for. What kind of a total, really? I mean, once before and once now. Recalibration. Well, look, um, you know, we were we are looking at anywhere between 160 to 180. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, still it is possible. It is still possible if we if we get uh, a couple of wickets now. Uh, do you have your first 11? Is there any big player missing because of injury, God forbid, or whatever else? Are you happy with this uh, 11? Well, um, look, uh, we, we, have, we have given actually, before, before uh, resting them, we are given as many opportunities as possible, uh, especially in this case today. Ibrahim Zadran, who is an under-19 player, I think who he played in the World Cup this time for Afghanistan. Uh, he has come in place of uh, Rehmat. Uh, so Rehmat, of course, is a big player, uh, international player, but we have given him, um, you know, uh, eight opportunities. So. Obviously, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, 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 he's definitely not performed uh, to the sort of expectations or the standard that he has set for himself. Um, so, uh, well, so that's what we have been doing. I mean, we, we it's not that we are chipping and chopping the, the players. We are giving them the extended run. 
and uh, that's when we try to bring in someone else. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk about the match anymore because this is running away a bit, uh, I feel for you. But however, yeah, however, uh, yeah. just a very quick feel of how the players have uh, assimilated, gotten together, a lot of the uh, young Afghanis, the old Afghan stars and the overseas players, and of course yourself. Uh, has it all been one fabulous unit? You've enjoyed yourself? Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been uh, interesting, it's been challenging, um, and uh, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got the, uh, the assistant coach with us, uh, Rais, who's trying to sort of build the gap uh, between the, the, the Afghan players and the overseas players. So it's been, it's been quite nice, yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thanks so much. It's 113 for one after 11, and uh, good luck for the rest. Yes, yes thank you very much. Pleasure. Najaugarh mein bade hone ke dooran na, maine ek bade kaam ki cheez se. Suno sab ki, karo dil ki. Mirka score zero raha ho, ya 295. Aap bhi na, apne dil ki karo. Zero zero. Phone uthao, aur India ka sabse exciting game, My Team 11, download karo. Oh, mala mala hai na maa. The pattern of scoring has been very similar. The first 15, 30 deliveries, the second one as well in 30 deliveries, so doing pretty well, the legends. In the last over, 12 runs coming uh, was expensive one. So really, uh, some issues here for the captain. Uh, very nicely mentioned by Venkatesh Prasad, they need wickets. That's the best way to put some pressure. Zahir Khan, uh, touch expensive so far, has been wicketless in his uh, two overs. Once again, wanting a single, a bit of yes, no, yes, no. But coming back, uh, to Hamid, who's with me in the com box. Uh, Hamid uh, Rasuli, well, uh, again, a very good find, good talent. Emerging the way he's batted, uh, didn't play early on in the uh, league phase. But once he's got that opportunity, he's uh, utilized that, isn't it? Absolutely. Such a brilliant player for under-19 and right now for a bulk. He's showing his skills and ability, the power of his batting. Such a, such a good player for Afghanistan. Maybe he can play very soon for the national side and he deserved to be there. And he was promoted as opener today. And Mandro become uh, one down and he came to open with uh, Christopher. Christopher Henry Gale, such a brilliant knock, and he got 50. Oh, missed it. That's a fox, Saluriza. It's a buy four runs, a welcome runs. Yeah, as a bowler, you're never pleased because that should happen.